name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Dear friends, welcome once more to the Stable Chapel here at Ednam Regional House as we continue to mark our progress through this fifth week of Lent. As we gather here today, let us pray that God will bless us as we seek to encounter him through his Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, here present in the Holy Gospel and through this sacrament of his body and blood. So to more worthily prepare ourselves to receive him, let us now take a moment to call to mind and confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross we may triumph in the power of his victory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Abram bowed to the ground, and God said this to him, Here now is my covenant with you. You shall become the father of a multitude of nations. You shall no longer be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham, for I will make you father of a multitude of nations. I will make you most fruitful. I will make you into nations, and your issue shall be kings. I will establish my covenant between myself and you and your descendants after you, generation after generation, a covenant in perpetuity to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land you are living in, the whole land of Canaan, to own in perpetuity, and I will be your God. God said to Abraham, on your part, you shall maintain my covenant, yourself and your descendants after you, generation after generation. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. Consider the Lord and his strength, constantly seek his face, remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, the judgments he spoke. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. O children of Abraham, his servant, O sons of the Jacob he chose, he, the Lord, is your God. His judgments prevail in all the earth. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers his covenant forever, his promise for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, I tell you most solemnly, whoever keeps my word will never see death. The Jews said, 
Now we know for certain that you are possessed. Abraham is dead, and the prophets are dead. And yet you say, whoever keeps my word will never know the taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? The prophets are dead too. Who are you claiming to be? Jesus answered, If I were to seek my own glory, that would be no glory at all. My glory is conferred by the Father, by the one of whom you say he is our God, although you do not know him, but I know him. And if I were to say I do not know him, I should be a liar, as you are liars yourselves. But I do know him, and I faithfully keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to think that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said, You are not yet fifty, and you have seen Abraham. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, before Abraham ever was, I am. At this they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and left the temple. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The crowd in today's Gospel reading don't understand what Jesus is trying to tell them. They respond by pointing out to him that both Abraham and the prophets are dead. And they ask Jesus if he thinks that he's greater than Abraham. Perhaps he's having delusions of grandeur, making outlandish claims that those who hear and keep his word will never die. In response to their questions about his identity and his greatness, Jesus declares that his glory and greatness isn't based on any assertions he makes about himself. Rather, it is the Father who glorifies him, the very same Father whom his detractors claim to be their God. And here we see a clear dividing line. The critics of Jesus are seeking to discredit and to kill him something that is completely at odds with the Father's person, the purpose in glorifying Jesus. And it demonstrates that while Jesus knows God and his intentions, his detractors, on the other hand, clearly do not. And Jesus goes on to provide yet more substance to his claims by telling them that their supposed father, Abraham, rejoiced to see his day and that he saw it and was glad. Now, Abraham understood that there would be a redeemer, one born of a, a woman, one born under the law, who would crush the serpent's head. And Abraham rejoiced that among his descendants there would, be, there would be kings, there would be those who would lead and protect and rescue God's people. Thus he rejoiced and looked forward to the fulfilment of what God had promised to do through him and to the one who would bring that, that promise to its ultimate fulfilment, to its grand crescendo. But those who were listening still, still failed to grasp what Jesus had said. And he goes on to say not only that he would be the one through whom God would ultimately fulfill his promise to Abraham, but also that he himself had always existed with the Father, and that after he died, Abraham rejoiced to encounter him, to encounter Jesus, in God's presence. His response, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am, equates his identity with the one who appeared to Moses and who spoke through, to him through the burning bush, declaring his name to be, I am who I am. Now, I've often joked when speaking about this passage that there are plenty of men who have claimed to be the great I am. But here in Jesus, we have a man who really was. Now, it's still a challenge for those who follow Jesus today to, to fully comprehend the reality of the incarnation that God was, uh, that Jesus was fully God and fully man. And while it might stretch our minds almost to breaking point to try and understand this great mystery, it's also a cause for great rejoicing. For in and through the humanity of Jesus, God brings to perfection his promise to Abraham and his fulfilment 
of his desire and intention to redeem mankind. It reminds us that when humanity is aligned with the purposes of God, we find ourselves to be far from useless. In fact, we become the very means, the very substance through which God brings about his plan for salvation. Now, you may be feeling pretty useless like that right now, unable to do the things that you would normally do or to relate to people as you normally would. And this week has been tough. I think we've all felt it. The new and the novel has become tiresome and dreary, and we're haunted by the reality that this could be the way that things are going to be for the foreseeable future. But take courage and take heart, for it is through human weakness and frailty that God ultimately conquers. It is in supposed weakness that God demonstrates his power to, to heal and to save. So let us turn to Jesus, God made man, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And let us rejoice in the one who in the flesh reveals to us the great saving purposes of God, the great I am. Amen. So let us turn to the Lord in prayer as we offer our petitions for the church and for the world and as we thank God for his goodness to us. As we pray for the church of God throughout the world, for its leaders and for its people, that like Abraham, our father in faith, the church may guard and keep her, herself faithful to God's covenant in our own age. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the world, that those in positions of power and influence may act and seek after, act for and seek after the ways that make for life and peace. And let us pray especially for world leaders at this time, those who are making difficult decisions, and for the medical and scientific experts who are advising them at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Let us rejoice that Jesus reveals to us his divine nature in today's gospel. And let us pray that he would enable us to keep his word, to be faithful and obedient, that in our flesh we too may glorify God. Lord, in your mercy. Let us remember before God those whom we know to be sick or ill or in any kind of particular need at this time especially those who are suffering on account of the coronavirus. We think of those who we carry with us in our hearts and on our minds, praying that they may know Christ's comforting presence and his healing touch. Lord, in your mercy. And let us pray for the faithful departed. Let us pray for the repose of the soul of James, who died recently, of Jesse Hales, whose funeral was earlier this week, for all victims of COVID-19, and for our own departed family members, friends, and loved ones. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. And in a moment of quiet, let us offer our own particular prayers, needs, intentions, and thanksgivings to God. Father, have mercy on your church in its need. Hear the prayers that we offer you with all our hearts and never abandon the people who share in your life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, friends, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Living Lord, the way of your cross is shown to be the way of our salvation. Your love and forgiveness are displayed as the key of our redemption, and your sacrificial love is offered as the foundation of our hope. Lord Jesus, help us to follow you, who are alive and reign, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives for ever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace, together with Tim and Judy, with Nicola, with Martin, amongst the departed, for James and for Jesse Hales, and for all who look to you for comfort and strength. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, 
with St. Michael, St. Andrew, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign, now and for ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. For the blessing and dismissal, can I thank you once again for joining us for this Eucharist and encourage you to check our Facebook site, the Edenham Regional House Facebook site or page uh, for uh, further content that will be uh, available uh, this week and next week through Holy Week. The Lord be with you. Christ crucified, draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.